you mentioned earlier this uh, whole issue of uh, the government imposing itself on the Catholic Church. And, of course, Governor Romney did something very similar in Massachusetts where he ordered Catholic hospitals to offer abortion pills uh, and uh, against their religious beliefs. And President Obama has carried this to an extreme position uh, and really raises the whole question about government control over our health care because essentially what, what the Obama administration is saying is if you're an employer, let's say you're, you're a fundamentalist or an evangelical or you're an Orthodox Jew or you're a Mormon or you're a Catholic and you, you deeply believe as a religious matter that uh, you're not in the business of providing uh, the things that lead to an abortion. Um, according to Obamacare, you either have to provide it or they're going to fine you. And this is just government imposition of government secular values uh, eliminating religious liberty in America. And I think that's why you've seen the Catholic hierarchy responds so intensely, and it's why you've seen uh, the Greek Orthodox bishops, for example, come out publicly on the side of religious freedom. And it tells you about how radical the Obama administration is that in a country which was founded in part by uh, pilgrims and Puritans and Quakers and Catholics seeking religious liberty from persecution in Europe, uh, we've now decayed to a point where the Obama administration believes they can impose secular values and religious institutions. You see Democrats now falling away from the president on this issue. Uh, Lieberman, Manchin, uh, both Nelsons, Claire McCaskill. John Kerry, Newt, is now saying this is a bad idea. When you lose John Kerry as a liberal Democrat president, you've really lost something. Well, you have. And, of course, Kerry pointed out when he was running for president that he had been an altar boy, uh, that he, in that sense, I think what bothers people is that it is a step too far, but, frankly, it's a step that judges have been taking for 50 years. Um, you recently had the Ninth Circuit Court rule that the voters of California could not affirm that marriage is between a man and a woman. Earlier, you had the same Ninth Circuit Court rule, the one nation under God, uh, was unconstitutional in the Pledge of Allegiance. You had a judge in Oklahoma rule that not only could students not pray at their graduation, they couldn't use the word invocation or benediction or God or ask for a moment of silence or ask people to stand, and he would put in jail the superintendent if they violated his order. I mean, So judges have been waging war against religion in this country for at least 50 years now since uh, the school prayer decision. And the Obama administration just makes it more more obvious, more egregious, and more un, more unacceptable. Within the Obama administration, we're now being told that Joe Biden was arguing vociferously against this policy. Bill Daley, who got removed, I guess, as chief of staff, was against this. You know, even Nancy Ann Min DeParle, who is one of the chief health care advisors for the president, was arguing against doing this, both from a political standpoint, perhaps more than a policy standpoint. And yet the president went ahead with it. I guess from a political standpoint, I mean, was he looking for a fight with the Catholic Church, or did he underestimate their willingness to push back? Well, you have to remember, this is a president who, as a state senator, voted for infanticide. Uh, I mean, he, he voted to protect abortion doctors who killed babies that had survived the abortion procedure and argued that the doctor's liabilities were too important, and he referred to... Uh, the child or fetus or whatever you want to call it, with contempt. So I think the real Barack Obama is a hard left, pro-abortion, uh, pro-protecting infanticide extremist. And I think his philosophy overrode his political common sense in picking this fight. But it, it's but what it really illustrates is the deeper underlying position, which is should the government of the United States be able to impose on anybody, not just a religious institution, but anybody, why should you be required, if you are pro-life, to buy insurance that pays for abortions? And yet that's the direction that the Obama, that Obamacare is going in, and frankly it was the direction that Romneycare was going in. Because you once you get to a big government centralized position, that's what happens. Do you think this has legs, even if the president, with these Democrats falling off from him, even if he backs off on this for now, will this, because of the mobilization of the Catholic Church and evangelicals who've been lining up and, and really kind of giving you and, and Rick Santorum, I think, a, a good platform to talk about this as not only a social issue but a constitutional issue, does this have legs beyond the next couple of weeks? All you have to do is ask the question, if Obama gets reelected, do you think he'll reinstate this? 
I mean, so so the fact that they may tend to fall, you know, they may try to maneuver to get past the election will be pretty obvious to the average American that this is a left-wing radical government that wants to create a secular America controlled by Washington bureaucrats, and that's who they really are. 